Let's get started with problem 13.10 from the fundamentals of chapter 13. We're going to keep doing problems in equations of motions in the tangential uh, normal coordinate system. So here we have uh, a race car. Here we have uh, Checo Perez or Sergio Perez coming at us. Right, so the car is going out of the page. And we're trying to see how fast can he go before the tire, the, the friction between the tire and the road uh, isn't um, enough to keep him on the road and he'll fly out this way. Right, so we're trying to see what, what's that velocity so he stays on the road. So, first thing we're going to do, like in everything we do, is Let's set up a coordinate system here, right? And let's see what are the forces on this Formula One car. We have the weight, mg, okay? We have the normal force, right? Remember, guys, the normal force is perpendicular to the surface, okay? Perpendicular, 90 degrees. And then we have, like I said initially, the car wants to fly out in this direction, right? Um, so, so friction is going to oppose that force, or sorry, oppose that motion, right? So friction force is in this direction. We're doing static friction, okay? Because the car is moving in, the, the car is moving towards us, right? So it's moving like in in a plane that's uh, perpendicular to the page, right? So the static friction is in the, you know, it's in in this plane over here, okay? Which which the car is not moving in that direction, so hopefully. So that's why we're doing static friction. Because you might think, well, the car is moving. Why are we using kinetic friction, okay? And that, and that's that's the reason why I'm saying it's it's in. Um, uh, the plane of the ramp and not the plane that's coming in or out of the page. Alright, sorry, I just want to throw that out there. And it also gives us the radius of curvature and the angle of 30 degrees. So if we have the angle of 30 degrees, then we know. Oh gosh. And we know that, you know, just this is, this angle is 30 and this angle is 30. Okay, so if I do my equations of motion, I'm going to say, okay, this is the normal direction, or the, yeah, the normal direction, this is uh, the z direction, and coming at us is the tangential direction, okay? So let's do the normal forces in the normal direction, okay, equals the mass times the acceleration in the normal direction. And before we we already know that the normal acceleration is v squared over rho. Okay, so the the tricky part is finding these forces. Okay, so let's see what are they going to be. Well, I know it's going to be positive s f s because I said pointing to the left is uh, positive. So f s cosine. 30, okay, plus the normal sine 30, okay, and let's see, is that all? Yeah, so that should be all, mass times velocity over rho, okay, now let's do the force in the uh, Z direction, right? Is the car is is our car floating up into the Z direction? No. So we know that acceleration for that for the Z direction is zero. Okay. So what are our forces in the Z direction? So we should have three. Okay. So we're gonna have minus mg, right? So we have this one, the weight. We have plus the normal cosine 30, okay, and then the friction uh, force, 
is going to be minus fs sine 30 equals 0. Okay. So another, th another thing we have to know is that friction force is equal to mu s times the normal. Okay. So let's isolate, or yeah, let, let's rewrite this equation here as minus mg plus n cosine 30 minus mu s times normal sine 30 equals zero. And then you're going to isolate the normal, okay? Because we have two equations, two unknowns. Okay, so we're going to do the normal is equal to mg cosine 30 minus mu s sine 30. Okay. Let's see. Um, so yeah, so we have this tiny bit of information here. Now we're going to plug this into this other equation that we that we established already and then we're gonna have let's write it the long way so mu s times n okay cosine 30 plus mg cosine 30 minus mu s sine 30 uh, times sine 30 equals m v squared over rho. All right. So I know this this is pretty much pure algebra, right? So after this, we have to isolate. We're trying to isolate the v here. Okay. So when we do that, we should get like a pretty crazy term. We should get v equals um, square root of mg on my notes I see it as um, I had it like this times oops it's all under the square root divided by cosine 30 minus mu s uh, sine 30 times m okay so I, I remember writing it you know in a cleaner way that way I can just cancel out the m's you know whatever all this term is you should end up getting 118.95 ish feet per second okay so you can you know once you are here in this part of the equation at this point you can kind of plug in numbers right um, like I've mentioned in the past one thing I do like to do is um, oh, we forgot to substitute it here but that's what I'm saying like once once you get here finish your substitution um, you know, plugging in this, uh, you know, this variable, um, and you can you can just plug in the numbers, and, and you know, you you're gonna have like some decimals. You might have like I don't know, point something times uh, cosine thirty, right? So he's gonna multiply it all out, and then isolate the v, okay? Or you can kind of keep it very nice and organized, um, like like I did in. The, um, so you can get a product like this. Well, that's you know the the hard part is you know setting up the forces, your equations, the algebra is after the, after the fact. Um, you know, so I hope this video helps. Um, I hope it, you know I'm trying to give you confidence in setting up the problem because it's always the hardest part of any dynamics, statics, mechanics, material problem. It's just being comfortable with okay, I, I set up the problem the right way. Uh, so I hope this video helps. Don't forget to subscribe. Give me, uh, 
like the video if it helps you and ask any questions you'd like. I'd be happy to answer them. Thanks, guys. See you in the next video.